Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie Dye Lab. Today let's make an ice dyed hoodie. The design on this hoodie is going to be diagonal sinew lines. I am going to just grab the corner of the hoodie, lift it up off the table, and then I'm going to start tying the sinew lines. I'm going to pull the sinew really tight. And when I pull that sinew tight, it's going to form a waterproof barrier on the hoodie. So it's not going to allow the dye underneath that area. And so I'm going to end up with some white lines on the hoodie. This design kind of favors a single geode, except it doesn't have a center. So it just does diagonal lines on the hoodie. And I think that the diagonal lines are very flattering to wear. I have one that's very similar to this one, and I get quite a few compliments each time I wear it. The hoodie that I'm using is a Port & Company fan favorite fleece pullover hoodie sweatshirt. I purchased this one from Amazon. And the face of this hoodie is 100% cotton. It does have some polyester in it, but not in the face of the hoodie. So it's going to dye up really nicely. The diagonal lines that I'm putting on the hoodie, I'm also not going to make those exactly the same. So I'm going to vary the distance between them. I think it just kind of gives a more interesting look if they're not absolutely perfectly distanced from each other. I like that randomness. Once I'm finished tying the hoodie, I'm going to put it aside for, in this case, about three days and let it dry out. I want to wait until the hoodie is completely dry all the way through before I begin applying the dye. I feel like I get better color saturation in the middle of a thick fold like this if I apply the dye once the hoodie is completely dry. If you'd like some more information about this, I have a blog post out on my website, which kind of discusses or explains why I like to dye thicker folds like this when they're completely dry. I have a link down below in the description for this video for my website. I also put a link to the hoodie that I purchased from Amazon and you'll find links for lots of the other items that I use when I tie dye. 
So for this hoodie, I'm going to use a variety of purple and pinkish type colors. This is actually a special order and those were some of the colors that the person said that they liked. So I've pulled out some really cool colors that split well, but I think will go well together. I'm using my longest containers that I dye over and the hoodie is a little bit too long to fit straight on the rack that I have. So I've kind of made it or formed it into an S shape so that it will fit on this rack and over this container. Then the silicone cake molds that I normally use are not quite tall enough. So what I've done is I've taken some plastic cutting boards, which I purchased from the Dollar Tree Dollar Store, and I've cut them into strips. Then I'm attaching the strips with binder clips and clothes pins and kind of weaving them around the hoodie. Then I'm going to use some wooden clothes pins right up next to these plastic cutting board strips to hold the strips up next to the hoodie. That's going to make me an ice barrier, which will make it a little bit easier to keep the ice on top. Otherwise, because of the shape of this, if I just tried to put ice on top, it's going to just kind of roll over the side. I'm going to apply the dye to each individual section that I made on the hoodie. And I have enough sections to apply each color two times and a few of them three times. So I'm just kind of randomly applying the dye though. I'm not doing it in a specific pattern or order. I want it to be, like I said, a little more random. So let me give you the dye colors that I'm using. From Happy Cat, I'm going to use Black Magic, Strawberry Skies, and Noble Purple. Then from Grateful Dyes, I'm using True Purple, True Violet, and Royal Purple. I'm using Plum Wine, and Scottish Heather from Dye Spin, Mulberry from Pro Chemical and Dye, and Razzle Dazzle, Orchid, and Elven Lily from Dharma. Elven Lily is one of the special order colors, and you can purchase that from a group called Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace, which is found out on Facebook. You can also still purchase this color from Dharma, but they sell it in large quantities. So the tie dye group out on Facebook will break down the larger portions and sell it in smaller quantities. I've placed a link down below in the description for this video for the tie dye supplies marketplace group, as well as the other dye suppliers that I purchased from. I know it looks like I'm adding a whole lot of dye to each one of these sections and I actually kind of am. I want to make sure that I have plenty of dye because this is a pretty thick sweatshirt. Because I'm applying the dye pretty randomly, it's going to be a little bit hard to go back and add more dye to a section. I could actually chart it out or write down what I'm doing, and I can always go back and look at the video if I needed to. But it's just easier to me to go ahead and add plenty of dye the first time rather than going back and having to apply more. Some designs, it's easier to apply dye later. With this design, I found it's not quite as easy to just go back and reapply. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye. I'm doing that just to make sure when I apply lots of ice and I keep forcing ice and liquid down through the shirt or the hoodie, I don't wash out all of the original soda ash that's in the hoodie from the soak. I need the soda ash to remain in the hoodie so that it allows the dye to bond properly with the hoodie. Now I'm going to add some ice cubes. These are about two inch ice cubes that I have. I'm adding those to the very top. Then I'm going to place this hoodie aside and allow the ice to melt. After it melted, I had quite a bit of dye left sitting on top. So I went ahead and added some more ice. This time I added just some regular bag dyes. 
I ended up going back and adding an additional three layers of ice to the hoodie. Like I said, I really wanted to make sure I got plenty of liquid flowing through the dye so that the dye went all the way through the hoodie. After the last layer of ice melted, I went ahead and left the shirt for about three days. It's kind of in that awkward period of time here where the weather kind of dips a little bit below 70 degrees and then comes back up. And I wanted to make sure it had plenty of warmth to go ahead and process properly. If you're doing this fiber reactive dye, it really needs to process at a temperature that is above 70 degrees, or you need to leave the item longer so that it has more time to process. What I ended up doing is taking it out of the plastic and putting it down inside of a plastic container. I put the lid on the container and I put it outside in the sunshine. That allowed the hoodie to get warmer than it would have inside the room that it was processing in. Then I took it to my utility sink and I began rinsing it in cold water. I'm rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I untied the hoodie and I went ahead and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Because this fabric is so thick, it has just soaked up this dye and the liquid very much like a sponge. So instead of just continuing to rinse for a long time, I put the stopper in my sink, added some really hot water to the sink, a little splash of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and just allowed the hoodie to soak. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and I continued that soaking process until the water was ending up being mainly clear. In this case, I soaked this hoodie for probably about two days. Then I put it into my washing machine and washed it using a hot water cycle along with a little bit of Dharma's professional textile detergent. Okay, so now that the hoodie's been washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one turned out beautiful. I love all the colors. Of course, you know, I like a lot of purples and pinks. So this is right up my alley. And I think the colors look really good together. You can see the splits from that strawberry skies, the blue up in the shoulder and down one of the sleeves. That is just the most gorgeous color. I love that color. Also, one of the purples that I used is kind of dark. It's got almost like a, a dark burgundy-ish look to it. And I'm not entirely sure which color that is. Several of these colors are fairly new to me, like the Scottish Heather and the Plum Wine from Dye Spin. So I suspect after looking at the color swatches that it might be one of those two colors. I'm not sure if you've used either of those colors and you recognize it. Drop me a line down below in the comments and let me know which one you think it is. It also might be Happy Cat Tie Dye's Black Magic. That one is a possibility too. I don't think it looks bad though. I think it adds some interest to the hoodie and I really like it. And I'm very pleased with the way this hoodie turned out. It dyed up really nicely and the colors are super saturated. And it's a nice weight of hoodie. It's not like a really thin hoodie. My white lines are not perfect and part of that is because the hoodie is so thick. If you'll notice like down in the corner of the hoodie where the fabric was a lot thinner because it's not as bulky in that area. I have some really nice white lines. They get a little less defined up through the middle part where the fabric is so thick. By the way, this is a size 4X hoodie. So that's part of the reason why I took a little bit longer when I made this hoodie is to make sure I let it dry totally before I started to apply the dye. And then after I put the dye on, I added plenty of ice to make sure the dye went all the way through and then left it for long enough to allow it to process and the dye to bond with the fabric. And I realized after I listened back to the recording part of talking about how long and at what temperature, because I'm in the United States, when I've ever mentioned 70 degrees for the temperature, I mean 70 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, the inside of the hood part of the hoodie actually died. So, when you're wearing it and that part's kind of laying on your back, the inside of the hood is really pretty too. Some of the hoodies I've dyed in the past, the inside of that hooded part is fleece, and so it doesn't really dye. But this turned out looking really pretty on the inside. The inside of the body of the hoodie is fleece, so it didn't dye. 
So overall, I love this hoodie. I think it turned out really pretty, and I hope that the lady that I made it for likes it as much as I do. And by the way, guys, I'm sorry I've been gone for so long. I had some surgery, and I had to take a little bit of time off to recuperate. I'm feeling great, though, and I'm back to tie-dye in, and I have quite a few items that I've died, but I just need to have time to make the videos. So I have more content coming soon and I sure appreciate all of you guys who've texted me or sent me messages to check on me. I'm doing spectacular. I am now missing a gallbladder and feeling spectacular. But thank you guys so much for checking on me and I really appreciate you guys. I have missed tie-dyeing so much while I've been taking time off. Okay, so if you guys have enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the little bell notification, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.